if you woke up today and you have food, you have a place to stay, and there is no threat to your life, then you can regard yourself as a really lucky person. Since we live in a world where no one feels safe, we have so many crises and challenges questioning our future existence that it's still a wonder that we humans manage to survive yet. But it's not okay. We are people and we want to live. And these are the words that people spoke loudly at the Worldwide Forum Global Crisis. We are people. We want to live in 100 languages of simultaneous translation. This event brought up light uh, to the horrors of our society we have created the crimes against humanity and threats we urgently need to deal with. The forum presented also so many uh, solutions that we already have today, but we need to change the very format of society to see them everywhere implemented in our world. So um, we are here today at the platform of Creative Society Project to speak about it, to speak about solutions that everyone really wants to see about our common goal to live in a world where happily pe people live happily and uh, where human life is really valued as it should be. And this is the Creative Society. Thank you, Antonia. Dear viewers, right now, it is the right time to stop being silent, to take this responsibility and become a true hero who stands with the Creative Society and all of humanity. Share this information with everyone you know so it can reach every single person on this planet. We invite you to organize such a discussion as today, as a good example, in your own country, in your own language. If all the people start to speak, your family, your colleagues, your friends, your community, what a powerful message will it be for the entire world? Imagine this, people in different countries and are acting together, united in one goal, where you know that you are not alone. And today, we're going to illustrate that initiative that we want to do um, with this interna international discussion. Today, we are joined with two of our guest that I would like to introduce. Aman Sahil from Afghanistan, currently living in, in Indonesia since 2014, and Haliaga Samadi from also Afghanistan and also living in Indonesia. Welcome, both of you. Hello, friends. Thank you very much. It's my, it's my pleasure to be uh, with you. Great. Uh, thank you so much, guys. It's a pleasure to have you both. Before we start this international discussion, we just wanted to go back to uh, the uh, uh, information that has been uh, raised in this uh, forum that occurred on the 7th of May uh, 2022. Uh, we gather a lot of different information about the situation in which we are, but we wanted to start with a small extract uh, right now and follow up uh, this video. We're going to talk a little bit more in depth. you may think it will never happen to you. While those people have been given all the help they needed and they are now safe. And indeed, there is now a huge number of organizations and foundations dedicated to helping people. The largest of them, the United Nations, is positioning itself as the guarantor of peace and security of humankind. For decades, we have been hearing beautiful slogans and promises from high rostrums. If you listen to these loud statements, it may seem that we will solve all our problems. There will be no more poverty, no more hunger, no more wars, and we will all live well. After all, there are over a hundred international organizations working under the aegis of the United Nations to solve the world's problems. For every new problem, a new organization is created. Every year, 
UN member states pay huge contributions to these organizations. In fact, this is money from our pockets. These are the taxes we pay to the state. Between 2010 and 2020, according to official data, the 44 UN organizations alone raised $540.4 billion. Contributions to the UN organizations have increased by 58% over 10 years. But let's take a look at what we have achieved over this period of time. The largest amount of money today goes to solving the problem of hunger. The main UN organizations to tackle this problem are the World Food Program WFP, and the Food and Agriculture Organization FAO. They have raised $79.8 billion over the last 10 years. Current estimates are that almost 690 million people are hungry in the world and 750 million people are severely food insecure. The Food and Agriculture Organization itself predicts an even greater increase in hunger by 2030. 841 million people. So, the World Food Program is projecting funding needs for 2022 already at $13.9 billion. So they say, there will be more hungry people, so they need more money. It is a legitimate question. How is it that, with ever-increasing funding, the problem itself is only becoming worse? Let's look at another problem, the refugee problem. The number of refugees has doubled over the past 10 years, comprising 82.4 million in 2020. The United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, UNHCR, deals with refugee issues. Over the past 10 years, funding for the organization has increased by 56%, reaching 4.8 billion in 2020. Let's look at what kind of help they provide to people. One area of refugee assistance is shelter. On their website, they state, The main part of our protection mission is to guarantee access to proper shelter in humanitarian emergencies. We provide tents, distribute plastic sheeting, and develop strategies, tools, and guidance in emergency situations, and provide emergency assistance to those who need it most. On cold nights or hot days, our help can be the deciding factor between life and death. In an emergency, tarpaulin tents are an adequate short-term measure. But people live in such tech camps for years and in inhumane conditions with no hope of the future. Due to the lack of even basic sanitation conditions, people die of infectious diseases. Who benefits from the problem not being solved? As long as there is a problem, there is funding. And if the problem is solved, there will be no funding and therefore no organizations. As long as there is a financial interest, as long as someone makes money from it, no one will solve the problem. The UN itself is very much like a transnational corporation in its structure. There is a parent company that coordinates and manages the activities of its other companies, but each brand is a separate business entity. In 2020, more than 3.7 billion was spent to maintain the UN bureaucracy. On staff and director salaries, health insurance, holidays, business class flights and other expenses. The planned expenditures for the renovation of the Palace of Nations alone in Switzerland, where the UN headquarters is located, is $871 million. With this money, 174,000 houses could be built using 3D printing technology. How many refugee families could benefit from this housing? But alas, building homes for those in need is not a priority for their aid. 
What do we have in the end? Numerous organizations that we have entrusted with the responsibility of solving serious problems of humanity turn out, on closer examination, to be merely business structures. It becomes obvious that there is a direct interest in the growth and aggravation of problems. In other words, it is beneficial for someone that people starve, struggle to survive, and make wars with each other. And that is the cynicism of the consumerist format of society. Creating the illusion of solving a problem without the real goal of eradicating it is a principle of the consumerist format. Under such conditions, it is tantamount to anesthesia for a fatal illness. And even closing or reforming some organizations or firing some individuals will not save the situation because new ones will come in their place and do the same thing, making money off our lives. Today, because of our tacit support for the consumerist format, we are all on the precipice. The rapid escalation of all crises will soon bring us all without exception to the brink of disaster. What kind of help will we get? A piece of tarpaulin for shelter and a couple of bottles of water? Yeah, you know, even watching this video again, uh, you just like, you know, feel how, how can it be possible in our world? But friends, uh, I would like to ask you both, uh, I think you can relate very, very much to this topic that was discussed in this video. Uh, could you please share what are your thoughts and uh, your feelings when, when you hear and see it? What was your experience um, you know, regarded to this topic? Well, thank you so much. Well, it's um, I feel so sad when while I see this kinds of these things happen and trying all around the world. But I think it's the time to do some changes. It's not the time that we um, just uh, feel bad about these kinds of things. We don't have the time to be spent. Let's go forward. Let's make some changes. It will be better. It will, it will be useful for the, those people that have the trouble in the, all over the world. Mm. Let's first start from ourselves. Let's talk to the people. Let's increase, uh, uh, motivate the people that we are able to change this society, to love each other, to make united. That after that, we cannot see kinds of things in all over the world. Thank you. It's my idea. Thank you very much for, for, for your answer. I, I just wanted to uh, ask, uh, yes, the same question to Ali. What, what is your view on this, uh, on this video, on this topic, uh, being re like yourself a refugee? Well, I feel so sad to be considered as a, to be used as a product. You know, when, when I watched the video, I found out that the organization just do trading with me. And that's uh, very disappointing. And if this goes on, we cannot expect a good and peaceful place on this planet to exist. So we need to help each other and give a hand to someone who needs our help to make the world a better place. That's, that's my idea. Yeah, that's, um, that's, that's very true because uh, I couldn't agree more that uh, Exactly, this understanding that uh, we are one world community family that uh, we want to live uh, in peace and respect with each other without borders. I mean, uh, we have all the opportunities. And 
even sitting here today, talking to each other, uh, just imagine we have thousands of kilometers between us and uh, we came up together here with this one goal to discuss, okay, what can bring us forward? I mean, from this horror, what we've seen towards the goal, towards the society where we do not, we are not afraid of tomorrow. So when you um, pay attention to the part where we have the technologies, so we saw in the video that there are the already the technologies like 3D printing, where the houses can be printed really in a short time period. And there is not that expensive than uh, every time giving up the money for shelters that you know, um, are not appropriate you know, very, very soon so that you need more and more new stuff and there's more and more money um, uh, going there. So when you see these opportunities, when you see uh, these technologies, uh, how many people do know that there is a solution? So from your personal perspective, how, how important it is that we start with this information, uh, this, you know, access to this information that we have the solution. This is not uh, some, you know, science fiction, but it is already working. It's just not implemented everywhere, but we need it urgently. So what are your uh, thoughts on this subject? Um, maybe Sahil, you first. Well, thank you so much. Um, in my perspective, the first thing that there should be someone, some group, some people to breathe, to ask IOM organization. Uh, I, as, I, as you know, that it's almost about nine or 10 years that I'm living uh, under the support of IOM organization. I know they are getting billions of billions dollar from different countries but how much of them the money they spent for the people those who need i'm sure in indonesia i see from my eyes experience because i live here even they do not spend those amount of money to come from refugees in indonesia even 20 percent of that amount of money they not they do not spend for them for example, they give the, the lower um, level of medicine for the refugees. Why? If when, when they ask, they say, it's that, that we can. It's, 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 this is the all that we can for you. In all over the world, it's the same like that, I think. They get a lot of money from all over the world, but they do not want to spend. Some people are getting richer day by day, but then the poor people are every day going down and down because there are a lot of corrupt in each organization. In each or IOM, I think there should be a team, there should be a, pe a person to ask them. This is my idea. I think we can change, we start changing from something like that. Thank you. Thank you for your answer. And I really like the way you, <clears throat> you mentioned the first the idea previously that, that we need to change, people have to change. Because if you think about the situation, you understand that money is going from one person, the taxpayer, to an organization, and then not going to the refugees to help them. So it's a structural problem because it's not happening in just with one organization. We just saw that it's happening with multiple organizations, actually all of them, uh, almost. So it's a very structural um, problem that we have. But what is part of this structure? People like you, like me, all of those organizations are managed are running because of people. So is, as you said, every single people will start change. Every people will realize that they have their own family, they have their own kids, they have their own parents, and those people, refugee, that they should be taking care of, being working for this organization, they should feel connected with them. So we should not think that one person will come 
and change everything. It has to come with every single person of us, less like we do right now today, discussing about this problem, make sure that this information is going to the ears of everybody and making sure that everybody is actually changing. It's obvious that you want to change. It's obvious that Ali also wants to change. It's obvious that we want to change, but we want to make sure that also the people in a comfortable seat running those organizations finally realize that they have the power of changing the world by helping properly the people. So it's indeed very much a common change that everybody needs to, to do. Ali, can you tell us a little bit more also this idea of, of how can we have things getting better, moving forward in a better perspective? Well, I agree with, uh, with science, the idea that we should change. Every single one of us should change. Uh, we should uh, first, we should uh, fight with, with our ego. Everyone has an ego. So we sh first should fight, fight our ego. And then when we overcome, when, when we overcome our ego, then we can uh, start helping the others, helping the innocent and the needy people. Because you know, uh, the more money that the more money comes, uh, the more uh, the money is so deceiving. You now people want to get uh, so much money from one uh, from wherever they want. They are ready to use people for their own benefits. So the first thing that we should do, or we must do, is to overcome our ego and look beyond ourselves. Not We shouldn't think only about ourselves. We shouldn't be selfish. We should also think about other people as well. They also have a family. They also have a future. They also want to have a peaceful life. So we should respect others' rights as well and stop misusing them. That's my idea. Definitely. And I can uh, really say that it is uh, even like proven by people worldwide what you say uh, because uh, we did in the last 10 years so many you know studies i mean the main study within the project creative society talking to each person i mean worldwide so friends okay let's uh, forget the problems we have let's focus on what do we really want so can you please say what do you want so how do you imagine the society where you feel safe and comfortable and, uh, you know, surprisingly or not surprisingly, actually very naturally, every single person on earth uh, wants basically the same. And uh, this is interesting because uh, when you know that there are studies and people did, they conducted them themselves, then you know, okay, this is already proven. So uh, the, the, the only part that is missing is the communication. Because what you said, for example, when we take also the example of organizations, don't let us don't uh, talk about the heads and CEOs and so on. The ordinary workers in each organizations, as you said, there are ordinary people who have family, have their worries, their wishes, and uh, you know there are people. So what is missing just to see, okay, how actually the people who need me, how they live. How, how they actually survive, how they feel, then you see that you cannot be indifferent anymore. So this is what we get every day by feedbacks of millions of people worldwide who watched the forum, who watched also Sahil, uh, your uh, personal experience in one of the conferences. So because you cannot stay indifferent anymore when you hear people directly without any middleman, so, and uh, today, like sitting here in Germany, um, I know that there are many, many challenges that we here face today already. So many can think that wealthy countries uh, do not have any problems, but such problems as a hunger or um, crisis of, um, you know, supply crisis or any other crises, this becomes our reality already. And 
I would like to suggest to watch the next video abstract from the forum and come back uh, discussing also the solutions. Every night, 811 million people go to bed hungry and already 38 countries are on the brink of starvation. We live in times of instability, pandemics, economic crises, climate disasters, military conflicts. They put millions more people on the brink of starvation. Are you sure you won't be among them? In the consumerist format, no one is secure against starvation these days. But it is such an absurdity. Why? Let's take a look at the technology that already exists. One of them is vertical farms. They have great advantages compared to conventional farms. They produce 300 times more food and up to 30 yields a year. They consume 95% less water and 80% less soil. They make it possible to grow various crops all year round without using pesticides. They don't depend on weather or location and require minimal logistics costs. Harvesting is possible even in Antarctica. Aquaponics. It allows simultaneous breeding of fish and cultivation of vegetables in a single closed cycle. Fish waste fertilizes plants, speeding up their growth by 40%. It is environmentally friendly and can operate in a virtually waste-free way without polluting water bodies. It doesn't involve pesticides and consumes 10 times less water. Yields from 1,000 square meters of land by this method equal to yields from 2 hectares of fields and 20 hectares of ponds. It can be applied in the tropics or an arid desert and even on the roof of a skyscraper. Humanity has already learned to print food on a 3D printer and to grow fish and chicken meat from cells. Even food made of air is no longer science fiction. A Finnish company is building a factory to produce flour from air and has won the first stage in a competition to provide food for space missions to other planets. We have shown only a few examples of technology, but even they can already resolve the problem of hunger once and for all. Development and introduction of such technologies in the infrastructure of cities will provide people with food everywhere, regardless of crises and disasters. It will make the process of growing food products independent of climate, weather, location, soil fertility, or even logistics. In consumer society, hunger is a prospect for everyone. In the creative society, not a single person in any country of the world will go to bed hungry. It will be up to us, people, to jointly decide which scientific discoveries to implement first, while openness and transparency of information in the creative society will make it possible to ensure reliable control over implementation of our decisions. We really want to live in the creative society. And what about you? So after watching this video, we I cannot really think about something else than being really, again, confused. The first video showing there is enough money to solve a lot of problems, but this money is not being used properly. And in this video now, we realize that the technology is already there, but it seems that it is not being used properly to actually solve the uh, anger issue. Uh, so there is really a, a problem somewhere. Uh, most likely the consumer's format of society, uh, realizing that there is no benefits on uh, this new way of growing food, uh, is not implementing it. But I wanted to have your, your view, uh, maybe Sahil, on, on this situation, understanding that the technology, that the evolution of a society, of a modern society, uh, helps um, to develop some new ways to grow food and fight anger, for instance. But this technology are not implemented. Why so? Can you tell us more about, about that? Well, thank you so much again to end this video. I I think 
the problem again is in, uh, we have the technology, we have the or many organization uh, just that it's related to the humanity, but I think the problem is uh, to this uh, organizations, to those organizations to depend for humanity like IUM, or it seems that there are a lot of corruptions happening in this organization. They do not focus to their jobs. They do not do uh, that whatever they should do for humanity. I think we should stay against of them, not <laughs> focus on, on something else, like uh, something that happened in, uh, in here and two days ago in Makassar city, there are a meeting, there was a meeting on Indonesia IOM, government for Indonesia, as well as uh, immigration of Indonesia. I was a part of that meeting. Something that I am saying, they are far different to uh, the refugees life. And then I said to, in um, Indonesian language to the local and for the local and uh, uh, government of Indonesia, I said to them, this is not that the real life of refugee that we live. This is the things that I am want you know. But our life is far different to this explanation that I am want you people know. That's why for tomorrow, um, tomorrow afternoon, the, uh, the boss of, uh, in this area asking me, call me to come here for a small meeting to explain something that, to, that day I talk with the, for the police. It means uh, that they now that they understood that something is going on here, IOM is lying, there are some corruption going on, some un injustice going on. I think the problem is there. I yeah. myself already start against, against of this IOM. I already start nine months ago with my friends, with my teams to stay against of them. It's stop, stop hiding refugees' pain. They always, always trying to hide our pain from eyes of the world. But we are fighting to show the reality in the world. I think it's also we are working for creative society. Thank you. Thank you very much for, you know, speaking openly because um, this is what we need today. So we are not afraid and we do not have enemies. We just sick of this format that is taking our lives. But on the other hand, we are the ones who, who are the part of this problem because we created the conditions where these crimes and corruptions and uh, the exploitation of people and, uh, you know, uh, like, appropriate use of resources and taxpayers' money, uh, where it, it becomes, you know, just possible because there is a lack of us, majority, who would control it. And for the control and transparency, we need the tools. So that means that we need these tools uh, to, to have in a society that we need this demand. Uh, so, but I'm, um, you know, actually I'm happy to hear, uh, you know, that there is, uh, you know, the uh, next step in your story. That means that, uh, it takes both sides where you speak loudly about what is really going on. And it means another side that means people who, who hear and who is not indifferent. And this is definitely the case that, uh, we are all humans and we really, want to live with each other happily and that's why i would like uh to come to this level of um values which are very important um because yes we can have the technologies and what we'll see in the consumerist format of society the technologies are first are being developed when which area in arms they're first implemented to you know to find the best way to kill people 
So this is really crazy, but this is indeed what is happening right now. So that means that alone the technology is not the problem. This is us, people, you know, who is the problem, uh, who, you know, uh, just using it not uh, for saving lives. So that's why I would like to ask you, friends, also, Ali, uh, what are your thoughts on the values that should be at the fundament of the society where the technologies, for example, are implemented for the good of all people? Well, actually, when I watched the second video, I was like, wow, we have so much technology. We can, um, we can grow vegetables so easily with less water, with less soil, without uh, losing the water. And we can do that uh, kind of gardening everywhere, even in, even in the South Pole. And that was like that was amazing. Uh, we have um, we have such technologies, so uh, we can use it to help millions of people to stop hunger. And the question is what that why people do not use that to end the hunger. That is really a big question. And uh, in the first video, we saw that. Uh, the, uh, the, the organizations are doing something wrong. If, uh, if, if, there, if there would not be any problem, so there would not be any money. So the people or the, those organizations do not want to uh, lose those monies. So they, wanna, they don't want to end those disasters. And if we want to solve any problem, we have to problem, we have to solve it from the bot uh, we have to solve it from the inner, from the bottom. Because when we solve the problem from the bottom for or from the inner, the inner part, the outer part will be fixed automatically. So the problem is that uh, behind the scene, Something is going on that people are not aware, and uh, that is that's a big problem. And it, yeah, that that's that's the very that's the very issue. And I think we touch upon the again the, the information. Uh, we talked about corruption, the corruption linked to money, but I think there is also a corruption of information. Uh, Sahid, you, you mentioned it very well when you're saying that you are trying to push organizations like supposed to help refugees to speak the truth about the way the refugee, the condition of the refugee. I cannot stop looking at the picture that you have in your background, such a powerful picture that really embed this idea of speaking this truth and pushing the truth to people for them to finally realize either it's the common people, either it's the people that still have a heart but working for those organizations that by listening to this truth might change something and might start doing things the better way. Ali mentioned it, the idea of every single person needs to change from the inner, but how can you change from the inner if you are not aware that there is something wrong? Um, Sahid, if you can go back into this, uh, this idea of communicating this information, communicating the truth. Uh, let's call it what it is. It's the simple truth that needs to be voiced to as many people uh, as we can. How can you tell us maybe a little bit more the way you see things regarding the truth and your, your, your action that you already uh, uh, do to be able to bring that truth to people, to bring that truth to as many people as you can? Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, thank you so much for the chance again. Guys, the, the things that, uh, one thing I want to add, the, from the time that I start with my team, with my friends, with the refugees in here, as you know, there are more than 10,000 refugees are living in Indonesia since 2012, and about 7,500 of amount of them are from Afghanistan, and... It, uh, since we start this demonstration, since we start stay against IOM, 
and Inertia. It's almost we are the enemy of uh, Inertia and I am nowadays because we tell the truth to the government and the media, or the, and as well as the media. So we saw a lot of mm, changes nowadays. The medicals changed a lot. They are focused to the medical. So uh, they, the staffs of the accommodations changed a lot. The uh, resettlement process also as well changed. So we get the result of this fighting. So we got the way, how to change, how to make a good society. So they, yes. they, 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 they go to the wrong way. This, do, this both organization goes to the wrong way. So we thought how to stop them. So we, so we thought that better to tell the truth, show the truth to the government of Indonesia that these two organizations this do, uh, do this all wrong things in your country, under your flag of country. So it will be not good for you to eye of the world. The world will ask, the, the world will not say that uh, these things are happening by IOM in Indonesia. That says, this is happening in Indonesia. First, name came Indonesia. That's why they are afraid of government and they make some changes. I think, and in my opinion, yeah. let's start being afraid. Let's talk the truth. Nothing happened. Let's do, let's breathe. Thank you. It's my opinion. Thank you, Sahil. And, uh, you know, um, this is exactly what we need, the examples. And uh, for me personally, uh, the forum, each person, each, uh, you know, each person who participated in on and off the screen, uh, because many, many people who are now participating in this kind of discussions dedicated to this event, we see more and more who got involved in this process. And even today, right now, the technical support who are making possible for us to communicate directly and openly today. We don't see them on the screen, but we know they're there. And uh, currently there are millions around the globe in each country. So Creative Society is a more than 180 countries of the globe right now. So that you know that you're not alone, that there are so many people right out there who have the same goal, who are acting. And when seeing these examples, you understand that there is nothing impossible for us. So we really can do a lot when we unite. And uh, important is also, and I would like also to thank you personally, so that you take the action and you bring us together right now uh, so that we communicate to each other uh, without borders. And uh, this is the example of the social active position that we, each of us, needs today. So as Ali said, we, we need to start with this also inner transformation, meaning stop being egoist, start getting out of the comfort zone, thinking that these problems will not come into my house. We saw enough evidence, evidences that it's not true, that it's already there. And uh, by speaking loudly, by, by sharing the truth and sharing also solutions, so we're not you know, getting into panic, we're sharing that there is enough solutions and resources to, to reach out to the world we want to live, to create a society. So um, this is really the very, very important point where we people, each of us, start being media. So like talking and sharing the information, you know, using the platforms, using the platform of creative society by communicating, by, by reaching out to everyone. So Ali, I would like to ask you, um, what would be your message to people who maybe, you know, wait for this impulse to get, uh, to start getting, you know, active. So what would be your uh, appeal to people who would listen to you uh, and hope to, to hear some advice? Well, 
uh, I wanna I'm gonna say to people that uh, if you don't get if you don't do anything nothing's gonna happen in your life no one's gonna do anything for you if you don't uh, move if you don't get up from your home get, uh, get out of your comfort zone and if um, and if you don't uh, start doing something for your life I'm gonna say this thing that no one's gonna do anything for you at all. Be sure that no one's gonna do anything for you if you don't do something for yourself. Nothing's gonna—I mean, no one's gonna do something for you. Even even God is not going to do anything for you if you don't do it yourself first. If you do it, uh. If you try hard, if you work hard, if you, if you put your trust in God, then everything's going to be okay. And uh, if you don't experience hardships, then you will not achieve uh, comfort. You will not reach uh, success. So you have to get up. You have to move your body. You have to get out of your comfort zone. Uh, and and I uh, get into action, and everything's God willing will be in its own place. That's my advice. Thank you, Adli, for your uh, for your answer. And it's indeed right that people need to act, needs to step out of their comfort zone uh, as soon as it's possible. So if they really want to have a, a, a future, they need, we need to really shift from, we should not shift responsibility to, to anybody else. We should not rely on anybody to have something happening, you know, you know, and building our future. So it's very important to, to do it as soon as somebody is aware um, of that situation. It's our role to spread the information, to make as many people aware. And as soon as you're aware, it's up to you to consciously decide, do I want to be active or do I want to be inactive? Do I want to be active and trying to, with whatever I can do from my own person, help or I want to be inactive and consciously stay silent and not add anything to this situation and just let it go until when until that as Antonina said that all of the scientists who develop all of those weapons to kill each other that we end up to this situation where we will really kill all of us so my next question to uh to Sahed, maybe a final question is to those people who already know already have an idea of what is the truth what what can you tell them for the one that are actually not still acting? All of the people that you talk to through your activism, uh, spread the truth, told the truth. What would you like to tell them for them to finally do something? Thank you so much, Jonathan. Uh, I call those people, they are hypocrite. Hypocrite, you know the meaning for sure. Hypocrite, those who are the true face. I find this maybe you kind not in this what is the message of this my background. This is stop crimes against humanity. This is, is the logo of IOM and kill the people that are refugees. Stop crimes against humanity. I walk with this shirt and the CD to make shame IOM. <laughs> so to force her, this organization to stop crime. I think it's the, be it's the only way that to <laughs> stop these uh, crimes against humanity. If we just are human, so IOM is an organization to help the refugees, to support the uh, people, but they are not supporting. They are doing business with the people, with the refugees, with the humanity. By the name of humanity, they are uh, thinking about their own pocket. As long as I keep refugees, I receive much money, much more money. This is corrupt. This is crime against humanity. So I'm suggesting to those people, there are many people, 
maybe millions of people knows everything clearly, but do, they are do not want to speak. They keep silent. Is there? I'm asking them, what is the differences between you and the corruptions of IOM or Inusia or some other organization or government? You know that everything, but you are kept silent. You can do something, but you do not want to uh, do action. I think this is, is it the real time to take action. To, if you want to make some changes, if you want to help humanity, if you want to stay against crime, take action. Is this the time? Don't be afraid. We are with us. Nothing happened to us. We want to change. So let's, let's stop. Thank you. Thank you, Sahil. And, uh, you know, indeed what we observe today, uh, this is a worldwide problem. So this is really something that uh, no country can alone deal with it. So that means that it needs us, a majority of people, to understand that uh, the problems uh, of refugees, the problems of all people who now are unprotected, these are the problems of us because tomorrow we will be in their you know, shoes and experiencing that. But we don't have to, you know, to, to wait to do this worst time to come where we cannot do anything because we lose uh, our time and lose our opportunities. So we are sitting here today to expose these uh, crimes, but also to show the way out. And uh, the way out is today really to unite, to, to see how much we can do together. So we're discussing uh, it actually every time on the global scale. So Creative Society have done so many conferences already on many global topics where we're proposing the solutions. And by each person joining the project, more and more people get involved and, you know, discuss also locally these uh, challenges and solutions. What can we do together today in our community, in our country, to implement the foundations of creative society where the human life is put first, where all the values that we share together, that they really are reflected in the solutions, in, in the laws in our country and worldwide. So um, I would like to encourage everyone who watching this discussion, who watching this conversation, get involved. Please join the project. Uh, please join the discussions. Organize these kind of discussions in your language, in your country, in your community. Discuss it with your friends, relatives, colleagues. Uh, this is really something that we really all share. And our voice, the voice of humanity, is being lo getting louder with everyone who joined this project. So, uh, dear friends, I would like to thank you. Uh, it was a big pleasure to talk to you, to see really what is going on and to hear your uh, sincere words uh, of kindness and, uh, you know, this uh, love to, to humanity, to people, because this is really what we need today. And, uh, yeah, dear friends, um, thank you very much. Uh, let's get connected and uh, continue our, uh, you know, our goal, continue achieving our common goal, creative society.